Good morning, everyone. As we begin our class for today, we pray the opening prayer. Together we say, Dear God, come be with us today. We fill our hearts with joy. We fill our minds with learning. We fill our classrooms with peace. Fill our lessons with fun. Fill our friends with kindness. And fill our school with love. Amen. Good morning. How's everyone? For today's discussion, we'll be talking about fractions. At the same time, we're going to talk about decimals. Our today's KUD, or you should round decimals with one decimal place. You should understand that decimals can be rounded up to the number nearest to full number. So, and then you're going to do some rounding decimals with one decimal place to the nearest full number. To begin with, let's watch some videos how to round off numbers, especially decimals, either to nearest full numbers and so on. Okay. Before we watch it, let's do some sound check. Hi, welcome to Math Antics. Did you hear the sound? Okay, kindly hold your pa paper and pen because you need to write important things about this rounding of numbers. Go. In this video, we're going to learn about an important math concept called rounding. To help you understand what rounding is, let's think about how numbers are usually used. Most of the time, numbers are used to represent amounts of things, like how many miles it is to the supermarket or how many days until your birthday, or how many students went to your high school. <laughs> how many students went to my high school? Oh, about 2,000. Okay, um, but it wasn't exactly 2,000, was it? Well, no, it was more like 1,900. Ah, but it probably wasn't exactly 1,900 either, was it? Well, no, it was more like 1,860. All right, fine. 1,863. See what I did there? At first, the number used to represent the students at high school was a round number. It was a good estimate of how many students there were, but it wasn't exact. The next two numbers were a little closer to the truth, but they were still estimates. Only the final number represented the exact amount of students at the school. All three of the estimates are rounded versions of the exact count, but they have different levels of precision. 1,860 was the most precise estimate, and 2,000 was the least precise estimate. So rounding a number basically means making a less precise version of it. And as you can see, there's usually multiple ways to round a number depending on the level of precision that you need. A really good way to understand what's going on when you round a number is to look at a number line. Here's 1,863. If we want to round it to the nearest 10, we need to decide if it goes up to 1,870 or down to 1,860. But if we want to round it to the nearest 100, we need to decide if it goes up to 1,900 or down to 1,800. And if we want to round it to the nearest 1,000, we need to decide if it goes up to 2,000 or down to 1,000. And in each case, the decision was based on which round number was closer to the original exact number. But you might be wondering, why would we ever want to make a number less precise in the first place? What is rounding good for? Well, rounding numbers can often make them a lot easier to do calculations with. Like, it would be a lot easier to quickly add 300 and 500. Now, before I continue, the first question that I will be asking you is why do we need to round off numbers? Can anyone tell me why do you need or why do we need to round off numbers? To easy calculate. Okay, to calculate easier, what else? Okay. 
And the other idea, why do we need to calc why do we need to round off a particular number? So one is that so that we can easily calculate or sometimes we can assume what is the value if we don't know the exact value itself. Now, since you know already why do we need to round off numbers, let's focus on rounding decimals. So here's another video on rounding decimals in particular. Hello and welcome to Rounding Decimals. In this video, you'll learn how to round decimals. Before that, let me remind everyone to turn, don't forget to turn your video on, okay? We use decimals to show parts of a whole number. There's another way to show a fraction of a whole number. Rounding decimals uses the same rules as rounding other numbers. Do you remember the rules of rounding? If a number is five or more, you round up. If the number is four or less, you round down. If you don't remember these, watch the rounding video. Decimals have place values, just like whole numbers. These digits are to the right of the decimal point. When you round decimals, you can round to a whole number, round to the nearest tenth, or round to the nearest hundredth. Most of the time, you'll round to the nearest tenth, but we'll look at rounding to a whole number, to a tenth, and even to a hundredth. Let's look at how to round a number to the nearest tenth. That means to the first digit to the right of the decimal point. Try a few examples with me. Our first number is 1.47. The digit in the hundreds place is seven. So we round up. This number rounded to the nearest tenth is 1.5. 1.64 has a four in the hundreds place. Four rounds down, so this is 1.6. 2.83 also rounds down, since there is a three in the hundreds place. So it becomes 2.8. Finally, 4.97 rounds up. If we round up, this becomes 5.0. If you have a long decimal number with numbers in the thousands place, you'll look at the digit in the thousands place to see how to round. 6.431 rounds down to 6.43. 8.589 rounds up to 8.59. And 7.438 rounds up to 7.44. Now you know how to round decimals to the hundredth or tenth place, but you still need to learn how to round them to the nearest whole number. You'll look at the tenth place to know which way to round. The number 4.78 rounds up to five. Since seven is more than five, and numbers greater than 5 round up. 6.24 rounds down because numbers 4 or lower round down. 9.47 rounds down to 9. The rules of rounding are the same for decimals as they are for other numbers. If you can remember those rules, round up for five or over, and down for four or under, you can round decimals just like you do whole numbers. Keep your rounding rules in mind, and remember, always be clever.
Now, based from the video that we watched, before we proceed with the activity, can anyone tell me what is the rule when rounding decimals? Any volunteer who would like to tell me what is the rule when rounding decimals? Go. Any volunteer? Like, how do you round off some decimals? Can I hear it from Akemi? How about from Jeslin? How do you round off decimal numbers? Jeslin? How about from Mervin? How do you round off decimal numbers? Okay, basically when we round off decimal numbers, it is just the same as rounding off a whole number. But before that, you need to remember the following. Let's say the numbers are one, two, three, decimal point, and then four, five, and six. What is this place? We call it the tenths. Five is known as the hundreds. And then six is known as the thousands. Okay. So when you round off to the nearest tens, you will base it from here. This is your target. Is it hundreds or is it thousands? <clears throat> now I have here a number line. Look at the number lines and answer the following question. Again, if the number is from 1.0 to 1.5, we round it to one, round down. And then if the number is greater than 1.5 up to 2, we simply round it up, okay? Before I continue, let me remind the following to turn their video on. Alfredo, Cristanto, Jezilyn, Luis, Sharon, Gracelyn, Jessica, and Jasmine. If you will not turn your video, I'll be forced to remove you in my class. Okay, this is your first warning. The second time that I will call your name, I will have to remove you to my class. Okay? Now let's go back. Luis and Jasmine. Using a number line, as you can see here, we have a 4 and a 5. Suppose a whole number 4. And then we have a five. How do we round off? Let's say, suppose we have a number here, 4.76. If we round off to the nearest whole number, five, observe that number is seven. It means it is a number greater than 0.5. We rounded up. From the nearest tenth, the number is 4.76. Your target is 10. What's the next number after 7? The next number is 6. Again, it's greater than 5. So we rounded up. We simply write 4.8. Okay? Now, we know that rounding off can be summarized as the same with the rules of rounding off numbers. If the digit is between 0 and 4, you simply round it down. And then if the digit is between 5 and 9, we round it up. Okay? Let's do some activity. Where can we identify 
73.6 on the number line. Suppose I will name the following lines as letters A, B, C. Use the chat box to message me your answer. A, B, C, D. This is E, F, G, H, I. Where can I locate 73.6? Message me your answer privately. Where can I locate 73.6 here? So between 73 to 74 there are several full num there are several numbers here decimal the first one is 73.1 then here we have 73.2 if i will continue this this means 73.1 0 0.2 this is 0 0.3 0 0.4 0 0.5 and then on letter f we have 73.6 if your answer is F, therefore it's correct. Okay, next. The next question is, which whole number is closer to 73.6? Is it letter A? Either you write 74 or you write 73. Go. Which whole number is closer to 73.6? A, 74, B, 73. From the number line from 73 up to 74, the middle number is letter E. So which one is very close to 73.6? The answer is 74, letter A. Okay. Teacher, may I go to toilet? Do it quickly. Next number, number three. Yeah, do it quickly, Alfredo. Number three. The instruction is we round off this number to the nearest whole number. Message me your answer. Round off to the nearest whole number. Go. Nearest whole number, it means we don't have any decimal. It's only a pure whole number. Seventy-three point six. What is our target number here? Our target number is six. So if the number is six, are we going to add one or down one? Move up or move down? The answer here is 74. Did you round up or down? Up or down? Look at this one. From 73.6, we get 74. We rounded up. Okay, let's continue. I'm going to post another example here. Number two, let us mark 9.4 on the number line. Again, I will name it as A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Where can I locate this 9.4? From letters A to F, or sorry, A to I, message me your answer. Mm -hmm. So 9.4 up to 10. From 9 up to 10, we have here a 9.1, a 9.2, a 9.3, and then a 9.4. It means the answer is letter D. Number two. Which whole number is closer to 9.4? Choose a letter. Is it a letter A, 10, or a letter B, 9? Go. Message me your answer. Mm 
Second warning for Luis and Jasmine, you need to turn your video and then others, please. Once you turn your video, make sure I can see your faces, not any other background. Between 9 to 10, the middle letter is E. Okay. How far is 9.4 from 9? And then 9.4 to 10, the distance is 6. 9 to 9.4, the distance is 4. So round, which whole number is closer to 9.4? The answer should be letter B, 9. Number 3, round 9.4 to the nearest whole number. Chat me your answer. Go. Round 9.4 to the nearest whole number. These are the whole numbers. It's either a 9 or a 10. The answer here is 10. Okay. Next follow-up question would be, did you round up or round down? Did we round up the number to the next whole number or we simply rounded down? Tell me if it is up or down. From 9.4, the original number is 9.4, and then we round up to the nearest whole number. Here, nearest whole number actually is not 10. The nearest is 9. Okay, it should be 9, not 10. If it is 9, therefore, we simply round it down. But if your answer is 10, then it's rounded up. Okay? Again. And last activity. Give me your answers again. 4.8, identify its location on the number line. I will name the following as A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Go. 40.8, where can we locate it? This is point one, point two, three, four, five, six, seven, point eight. Here is the location of 40.8. Now tell me, which whole number is closer to 40.8? A or B? Go. Closer to 40.8, A or B? The answer is letter B. Number three, round the number to the nearest whole number. Message me your answer. Whole number, I want to see a number. Go. Okay, the answer here is 41. Now tell me, did you round up or round down? Up or down? The answer is up. Question none. For the next activity, this time we're going to do matching game or choosing, you're going to choose a number. I mean a letter, push all decimals that round up to two. You need to message me all the answers. Let's say if your answers are A, B, C, D, then you have to message me all the letters. It should be round up, up, not down. Round up, up to two. Go. Choose 
choose all the decimals, uh, Ricardo, you need to write only the letter. No need to input the numbers. I want to see all letters yeah. in one shot. Yes? May I go to the toilet? Do it quickly. Again, you have to choose all the letters. No need to write the number. I want to see all your answers in one message. Go. For this table, these are the answers. When you round up, the answer is two. Letter C, up. Letter D means up. Num letter H, up. Number I, up. Number one, up. So only letters C, D. H, I, J. Okay, when you round up the following, the answer is only two. When I round this up, the answer is three. When I round this up, the answer is three. This one, when I round up, it goes round down into one. Down to two. Up to three. Okay. So C, D, H, I, J. Next table. This time I want you to choose all the letters when you round up. The answer is 7.3. When you round up. The answer is 7.3. Go. Choose all the letters. So technique here is that you remove all the numbers whose first digit is 6. I will cross out the following. And then you will base your answer from this number. You need to look at the second decimal or the hundreds. Okay, let's identify which of the following are correct. When you round up this, C, round up means 7.3. Round up, check. This one, it goes round down, down, round down, down down so only letter c and letter d when you round up the answer is 7.3 you cannot get letter b and letter e and f and h and j because the number is lesser than five you go round down okay next one Round up to five.
round up to five, it means I will cross out all the numbers with more than five. More than five. And then this time, I'll go in to check the numbers before the decimal point. If it is from 0 to 4, I'll go down. If it is 5 to 9, I'll go up. Let us check which of the remaining letters will give us a 5 when we round up. 6 is greater than 5? Yes. 4.9 gives us 5. 4.5? Yes. 54. 4.8? 4.51? 4.82. 4 so the letters are B. D, E, F, G, and I. Next one. Choose all the decimals that round up to 31.12. It means we're going to look at the number after 2. After 2, if the number is been 0 to 4, you go down. If the number is between 5 to 9, you go up. At the same time, we remove all the given numbers that starts with 29. Also, the number that starts with 30, choices are either letter A, a letter C, a letter F, a letter I, or a letter J. Our Q is round up. When you round up this, the answer is 31.12. We down it, we round down. Here, the answer is 31.2, but it's round down. Here, 31.2, but round down. Go, Jessilyn. Here, 31.2 when you round up. Then here, 31.212 when you round down. So the answer is only letter I. Now, from our discussion a while ago, before I end, I want you to make two star and one wish. You need to share your thoughts from the discussion about decimals, rounding of decimal numbers. Okay? For the remaining two minutes, decide your two star. What are your two stars for today's lesson? And then one wish. You need to share your answers to me. Okay, let or you may use chat box if you want. So I'll just read the answers here. One wish, good at math. How about the two stars? You can message me your answer here. Two stars and one wish. Let's say two stars. My first star is rounding number. My second star is rounding down. And then my wish is to be good at rounding numbers. Hello. 
Only Ricardo participate with our activity, two stars and a wish. You may message me your answer if you're too shy to uh, share it with your classmates. <laughs> I wish the virus gone, but that is in uh, the problem in the world, but not in our discussion. So if no, no other students will participate in that activity, I think that ends our discussion. We now close it with a prayer. Everyone, let us remember that we are in the holy presence of our God. Dear God, before that, thank you, Angelina, for answering. So as we pray our closing prayer, dear God, we thank you for all the things we have learned today. Please help us remember all we have learned today in class as we look forward to tomorrow and all the wonderful things we will be taught. Amen. Good day.